Today, I want to share with you a very quick summary of this book, The Sixth Extinction. This is a book by Elizabeth Colbert. This book won a Pulitzer Prize in 2015 for the best nonfiction in the best nonfiction category. Why should you read this book? This book is a book of human history. No, a book of the world history not just contemporary, contemporary in the sense lost 2000 years. It's a book about evolution. So it goes back, traces back life to millions and millions of years and gives different point in times, history or events that could have happened in different point in times. It speaks about a lot of unsung heroes, people who spent a lot of efforts in understanding how different life forms have evolved over time. In many cases, there are a lot of theories in this book, which may or may not be true, but it gives a very good understanding of the latest um, developments in geology, in paleontology, in archeology, span but more specifically towards human evolution and evolution of other life forms on earth. With that quick introduction, let me dive deep into different aspects that are covered in the book. I would like to categorize them in terms of information. Three different type of informations are available. The book starts with different type of, uh, the first category I would say is different individual species. It picks different individual species like the golden frog, the great auk, rhinos, specific bats in Northern America and American Mastodon. It speaks about how these species, despite being very large in number at certain point in time, became extinct or near extinct and what caused them. So this is the first part. As you read the chapters, the chapters explain you and it's explained in a very good fashion. Most people generally are able to understand it without technical knowledge about all these stuff. If I have to categorize these into different reasons for why these species are extinct now or near extinct, I would uh, look capture three or four reasons. The first one, in many cases, um, the underlying theme of the book is we as humans are the reasons for most of these species becoming extinct. So let me tell you why. The first one is transportation. The improvements in transportation has led humans live almost in all corners of the earth. And when we travel, we take along with us other microorganisms such as bacteria, virus, fungus, and so on. And different life forms in other continents which were not exposed to these microorganisms face sudden threat from, from the microorganisms we carry. For example, the golden frogs and the gray talk mentioned in the book, it is ex predicted that these are likely extinct or becoming extinct. The golden frog and the bats because of fungus, because of fungus moving across different parts of the world. So these frogs, which were not exposed to a certain form of fungus now are not able to survive them. Moving on. The second reason is hunting. For several centuries or thousands of years, humans, wherever they moved into, they did hunt, either for food or for fun. And this seems to be one of the main reasons for a lot of large animals extinction from elephants to rhinos, mastodons, American mastodons, many large animals are near extinct or completely extinct today because of hunting or poaching. So that's another thing that's called out in the book. And finally, the book also speaks about things like uh, damage to coral reefs and uh, how, how it's caused. It also speaks about a lot of scientific study that goes behind why these theories are formed and how conclusive they are. And when it comes to stuff like coral reefs, reefs, the most likely reason why they are nearly extinct is because of carbon emission. It is, 
it is believed that about 25 percentage of life forms on sea are dependent on coral reefs and at the rate at which the carbon is emitted in the atmosphere the rate at which different form of elements or car acidic elements are emitted in the atmosphere they pollute water in the sea and the acidic level in the sea has gone up 30 percentage since a few centuries ago and this prevents the seawater from sucking carbon and therefore results in more and more carbon in our atmosphere. This further accelerates global warming. One of the interesting points mentioned in the book is about the rate at which things are happening. More often than not, most humans are not able to see the global warming around us because these things happen very slow compared to one human's lifespan. We don't see a lot of changes within our lifespan. Most of these started in the 1700s at the birth of industrial revolution and things continue to get worse day by day. By most predictions, by 2000, the climate change could be severely disastrous at the time of this book's publishing. And nowadays, we have accelerated it and many expect there could be more disasters by the year 2050. That's 30 years from now. The book calls out the, the rate at which um, the global warming happens is cataclysmic. As most of you would know, catalyst is something that accelerates a chemical reaction. And what we are doing is we are accelerating an apocalypse, the next extinction. The book says five past major extinctions have been observed based on geological findings or archaeological findings. And we humans could be the reason for the sixth extinction. And the worst part is we are not only likely to kill many other living organisms on Earth, we could we are also posing a threat to Homo sapiens, we humans as well. The last and uh, one other major problem discussed in the book is deforestation or lumbering. You'll not be surprised to hear that a large scale deforestation could impact the atmospheric uh, climate changes. It could actually stop some stop rains in some places where we see very high rainfalls. So, for example, if, if there are a lot of um, rainforests in Africa, Near, near the Amazon and if rapid deforestation happens it could actually impact the rainfall in those regions. Moving on another interesting uh, several other interesting aspects mentioned in the book is about how different scientists or I'm not sure what to call them paleontologists or evolutionary scientists made their way into our understanding of evolution. The book speaks about Charles Darwin. It gives a lot of insights about what really happened during his life, how he came up with this book with the help of a lot of people and did not publish it for over a decade. You should read the book to find out what made him publish his most popular book. The book also further speaks about Neanderthals. It speaks about this theory of single origin theory out of Africa theory or replacement hypothesis. All these refer to same. This is the idea where it is believed that we Homo sapiens came out of Africa and started spreading. We came across another species called Neanderthals and they look very similar to humans, but not exactly humans. You could actually Google uh, them to find out how they look like, probably with a little larger nose, shorter than us, etc. A broader face. So, it, it appears that we, um, what should I say, we lived um, together with them as a community and then we reproduced together with Neanderthals. The, one of the striking evidences in, in many people who are living today, there are traces of Neanderthals. But why Neanderthals became extinct is, is still a mystery. One of the theories mentioned in the book is we, humans, like we kill all other living organisms, we could have killed Neanderthals. This is probably a place where I don't agree with the book. It is likely that there could have been another pandemic like we had in 2020 
and Neanderthals could not have been immune to the outbreak at that point in time. That's, that's my prediction. Finally, to conclude, what does this book call out? The book calls out, we are losing biodiversity. Lot of different living organisms on Earth, species on Earth are dying at a very rapid pace. We as humans should take actions to stop this. That's the first call out. The second one is we should start thinking more. We should be more innovative, start thinking on creative ways to stop the sixth extinction or we'll be fossil fuels, fossils and some other species thousands of years from now would study about us and make predictions on how we lived our life. And finally, the book, despite being all these so much pessimistic remarks, the book finally concludes in the last one or two pages with a positive note. Do not be so depressed. There are a lot of innovations and creative ideas going on. We could also, we are also looking at possibilities of settling in other planets as well. So do not lose hope on there is still time. There is going to be a tipping point when this, uh, the pH levels in the seawater is going to cross a particular limit. The carbon emission levels are going to cross a particular limit. If we breach the threshold, if we cross the tipping point, then we may not be able to turn back. So we'll all have to take action and uh, influence others to take action before we breach the tipping point. And that's a quick summary. I would love to hear your thoughts on what you think about the book. If you can, definitely check out the book. It's a very good read and very insightful. Thank you.